All right, welcome to the video. Today we're gonna be talking about the EOS R5, but check this out, track me. Ho oh, ho, look at this. So this is the Feutech gimbal with AI tracking camera built into the gimbal and it doesn't even need any wires or connections and stuff. Anyway, I'm gonna review this product in a future video if you wanna see that, definitely subscribe to the channel. But in this video, we are gonna be talking about the awesome R5. The R5 II hasn't been released yet. The R1 hasn't been released yet. So as of this moment, in my opinion, the R5 is Canon's flagship camera. It is the best camera that Canon has ever built to this point. All right, so let's talk about it. R5 in 2024. All right, so here you are, here I am. Let's talk about the EOS R5 or EOS R5. So I've had this camera for a long time, pre-ordered it when it was first announced, picked it up first day, been using it ever since. And I try and film weekly YouTube videos, so I'm filming a video with it at least once a week. I'm using it as a photography camera to shoot my clients and also produce videos for clients as well. So I've been using this camera for a long time, had a lot of experience with it. I've been a professional photographer 19 years. I've been doing videography for six years. So I've got a lot of experience in the industry. So we're gonna talk about this camera or I'm gonna give you a little review of this camera based on somebody who's been using this camera a lot and somebody who works in the industry and makes money with a camera in their hand. Obviously filming with the R5 right now, I can't really show you here. But uh, yeah, so let's talk about the R5. Couple things we're gonna touch on here. First is photo quality. We're gonna talk about video quality, then usability. Talk about the screens because that is important. We're gonna talk about the menu. We're gonna talk about field use. So like my experience with the camera in the field, working with clients. And then we're gonna talk about the uh, EOS R5 Mark II and what improvements it might have. And is it really worth upgrading to the R5 Mark II? Or if you're like debating between two cameras, is it worth it? We Obviously we don't know anything about the R5 Mark II except for the fact that I'm like 99% sure it's gonna be released in July, 2024, which is in a few months. So if you're looking to buy an R5, I would wait a few months until the R5 Mark II comes out and then the ooh, R5 price is gonna drop. And if you really wanna save some bucks and buy a camera with flagship quality stats at a bare bones bargain price, wait till US Black Friday, 2024 and the R5 will be selling like <laughs> at its lowest point ever. So if you're drooling over this camera, save your money, wait till Black Friday and get an amazing deal. So with that being said, let's start with photo quality. All right, so let's talk about photo quality. I mean, okay, this is gonna be a very simple review. 45 megapixel, high resolution sensor, it works with EF lenses. It works with old Sigma and Tamron EF mount lenses. It works with Canon's new RF glass, which is absolutely like stupendously, incredibly sharp. Like that 85 1.2, 50 1.2, 100 mil macro, 28 to 70. Those RF lenses are like, like a level sharp, incredible. And combined with the high resolution sensor on the R5, like <laughs> it is absolutely nuts. In fact, it's almost too nuts. Like if you're shooting portraits of people with that 85 1.2 with the R5, you see so much detail. It's not medium format quality detail, obviously, but there's still for full frame, the detail and the crispness and the sharpness is absolutely amazing. And unfortunately, you're gonna be cleaning up pores and things. So maybe it's just too sharp. Just throwing that out there. But in any case, the R5 is capable of producing incredible, incredible images, super detailed, super sharp and it's compatible with all the lenses Canon has ever made. I know a lot of people on YouTube are like, oh, but the lens lineup with the RF isn't that big compared to other companies. That's BS, right? You can put every single FD mount lens, EF mount lens, RF mount lens, including EF lenses from third parties on the R5. And if they have autofocus, it'll work on the R5. So like, <sighs> They say sometimes like the old Tamron lenses, the EF mount or Sigma is like the third party stuff doesn't focus as fast. But in my personal opinion, these EF lenses that you're, you're adapting to the RF camera will focus just as fast as they did back in the DSLR days. Obviously new lenses, new cameras, mirrorless is a lot quicker, faster, snappier, but you can still use eye tracking if they have auto, like if the lens has autofocus, you can still use eye tracking and all that stuff with the R5. It just may not be as fast as RF lenses, but in any case, image quality, lens selection, absolutely amazing. I have no complaints whatsoever with image quality. I personally think as of right now, and keep in mind the R5 Mark II and the R1 haven't been released yet, and there's the old 5 DSR, but I think the image quality that you can get out of the R5 as of this moment is the best that Canon has ever made, period. 
And that's my thoughts on image quality. All right, so let's talk about video quality and we're gonna break this down into two sections. We have the hardware and then we have the uh, the quality of the video itself. So the deliverables that, we, that I give to clients. So let's talk about that first. When it comes to the deliverables, I have no complaints with the R5 whatsoever. Nobody has ever said, oh, this video is not good enough. It's not sharp enough. It's not clean enough. Like the codecs that Canon supplies you with are so beefy and capture so much detail that like, <laughs> whoo, if you're shooting with like a high resolution lens, like the 28 to 70, and you're shooting in 8K, it's just like you pick up so much detail, it's mind boggling. In fact, you could even make the argument that it's too much detail. And so you can shoot 8K with the R5, you can shoot in 8K RAW with the R5, which is absolutely nuts. There's also like a 4K mode, which is 8K compressed down to 4K. So that's 4K fine or 4K HQ. It's called both in the menu. So that's the same thing if you see both. And then you have 4K all eye codec, which is a super beefy codec. And then you have 4K IPB, which is sort of like the more compressed, not as good quality codec. So guess what we're filming with right now? The R5 in 4K IPB. <laughs> so this is like the worst quality 4K you're gonna get out of the R5. And you're looking at it right now. And it gets a lot better from here. And it's YouTube, so I film all my YouTube stuff in IPB. For clients, I'll film uh, all eye or 4K HQ. And in certain situations, if I have to zoom in and punch around or something, I will film in 8K, but usually I don't. And also you have C-Log, uh, is it one and three, but you're missing two. So you have C-Log as well in the uh, R5. So when it comes to deliverables and giving stuff to clients, absolutely happy with this camera. I can't imagine a camera that would perform better, especially for talking head stuff like this. Maybe if you're shooting sports, there's a better camera out there for capturing video and locking on to let's say the quarterback or whoever you're tracking in the, in the sports arena. So maybe there's cameras better than the R5 for that kind of thing. This isn't really a sports and action photography camera, although you can shoot sports and action with it. But for shooting people, portraits, like interviews, uh, tutorials, uh, teachable content, uh, that kind of stuff, this camera, absolutely amazing. I have no complaints on the video side of things. Now, if we go to the hardware side, so on the hardware side, like cameras like the C70 have a DGO sensor. Some cameras have a stack sensor. The R5 just has a regular sensor. So, I mean, there are better sensors out there. Some cameras have more refined AI autofocus capabilities. So they're better at tracking birds, better at tracking, you know, golf balls or bugs or something like that. But generally, like I shoot people and when it comes to shooting people, the R5 is fine. I have no complaints with it whatsoever. In fact, I would say the video selection menu on the R5 is the best menu I have ever used. And hopefully Canon implements this in the R5 Mark II because if they get rid of this menu, I would be so upset. In fact, they can improve this menu by adding 4K to it and, and uh, 4K fine and all that stuff. They should expand on this menu, but this is great because you pick your Kodak, you pick your frame rate, you pick, you pick all your settings and then go. And it's all in one place. So it's got a beautiful menu, it makes it super fast for shooting video. So to wrap all this stuff up, when it comes to video, I mean, okay, one thing we didn't touch on is the overheating. The R5 did have overheating issues when it first came out, when it was first launched. But as a firmware 160, I believe, you can uh, download it there if you wanna go check it out or watch the video about it there. But uh, yeah, after firmware 160, Canon uh, added a feature with it, which allowed you to tell the camera to ignore the overheating sensor, which allowed you to you know, record longer. And another thing I guess we should touch on with the R5 is it does have a 30 minute record limit and a lot of people make a big deal about this. But honestly, as somebody who films a YouTube video every week, as somebody who like shoots video for client all the time or clients all the time, I have never, ever, ever let the camera run to 30 minutes. Like if, let's say I'm shooting a tutorial video for a client who wants to make some sort of like teachable content. We break that down into sections. This is module A, module B, module C, and then this is this section, this is this section, and break up the, like, the modules into sections. So it's like the first five minute section, record and then stop, and then start recording again. Like I record everything in sections. That way when I upload something to my computer, it's not just like one long, massive video. So, and, and if you're filming like, like films or movies like that, if you watch any Hollywood film, you'll notice every scene is like three, four seconds, three, four seconds, three, four seconds, three, four seconds. Nobody films for 30 minutes or more. So even though like, yes, in my videos, I do complain about it. I wish it wasn't there. The truth of the matter is I've never actually even gone to the 30 minute limit. It's just like, 
what are you going to film for 30 minutes? Although like I can imagine, like if you're filming, let's say a podcast and you just want to hit the record button and record the whole podcast and throw it up on YouTube, I can see there, okay, yes, it'd be beneficial to have a camera that can run longer, but there are solutions, there are workarounds. You can get an external recorder. Like I use a Ninja V or Ninja 5 recorder, plug it into the camera, have the camera with a, set up with a dummy battery, have the recorder with a dummy battery. I just hit record, let it go and it, it'll go <laughs> and it'll go and it'll go until it runs out of space. But the good thing with the external recorder is you can get, it runs on uh, like hard drives, a laptop hard drive. So I have a, a 500 gig <laughs> laptop hard drive in the uh, Ninja 5. And if I need to record for four or five hours, boom, there it is. So, I mean, there are workarounds. So if you are using an R5 for video and you need longer video, there are solutions. But overall, I would, what did I write down here for rating? I would give the video nine out of 10 here simply because there are, what did I write down anyway? Why did I give it? Uh, okay, I gave it nine out of 10 because there are better sensors out there with better dynamic range, like DGO sensors, for example, that you would find in the C70. But overall, super happy with the, uh, the R5 for video. Next up, we have usability. So first thing I have written here in my notes is overheating. Okay, we talked about that already. Firmware update kind of solved that. Next is this really quirky decision that Canon made to put no photo video switch on the camera. So there's no dedicated switch. You have to hit the mode button. You have to go into the mode button. Then you have to select photo or select video and then switch from one to the other. But there is a fast way to do it. You can program the MFN button on the front. Video about it right there. Go check it out if you're a new R5 user, but you can use that little trick to switch between photo and video fast. It has a micro HDMI slot and I see a lot of people on YouTube complaining, especially like high, like videographers are like, oh, there's a micro HDMI slot, it's gonna break and blah, blah, blah. Listen, I've had this camera for four years now. I film weekly YouTube videos. There's something plugged into that micro HDMI slot all the time. It has not broken on me. It has not glitched on me. It, I have not encountered any issues with it. I mean, obviously, knock on wood. And I don't know anybody else who has had problems with it. So it has a micro HDMI slot. I, I don't know what to say. I just, I've never run into any issues with it. So I have nothing bad to say about it, even though I know all the other reviewers complain about it all the time. Um, this is the R7 here. And the nice thing with the R7 is like the headphone jack. See, this is this, if you're filming yourself, the headphone jack is up at the top, so it doesn't block the screen which is nice. Unfortunately, the R5 doesn't have that. So when you have the headphone jack and HDMI plugged into the camera, like I'm looking at the screen right now and there's, there's cords sticking out and it blocks your view. I, all cameras are kind of like that. I wish camera designers found a better way for videographers to plug their cables in so they can record themselves without having cables in front of their faces. So that's just one of the quirky things, but that's something that uh, happens with all cameras. All right, so another quirky thing with the R5 is it has two different types of card slots. So it's got one CF Express card slot, so you have one of these bigger cards, and then one SD card slot. And I find it very cumbersome because let's say you're shooting, you're a photographer only and you pick up an R5. Why do you have to buy one of these expensive cards to have backups? So you're shooting the one card backing up to the other card. Let's say you're shooting a wedding or commercial event or commercial product shoot or something and time is money, you can't reshoot, so you always wanna capture backup. So now you have to spend money on, an, on a CF Express card and an SD card. And when it comes to video too, it's also quirky because if you're recording like 8K video to this card, you can't simultaneously record backup 8K video to the SD card. You can record a lower quality video so you can get some kind of backup, but you know, it's, it's a little quirky, quirky design, so just something to keep in mind. Button layout on the R5, absolutely love it, no complaints. If you're using Canon cameras and you're used to the Canon camera layout, it works great, no problems there. Usability, eight out of 10. It's just a couple of these weird quirky things like no photo video switch that uh, knocked it down a couple pegs. All right, so let's talk about the screens on the EOS R. We have the LCD on the back and then we have the electronic viewfinder, the EVF. And I have no complaints about either one of them. The, the screen on the back of the, this is the R7, by the way, this the screen on the back of the R5, absolutely amazing. It's clean, it's crisp, it's sharp. The EVF looks great. Like you really don't look into it and think, oh man, I wish this was an optical viewfinder or optical viewfinders are better. That thought doesn't cross your mind. It like refreshes nice and fast, no problems. I have no complaints about it whatsoever. Although if I do want to nitpick, 
I will say, I wish there was a better magnification. I wish he just it magnified more and looked bigger when you look through the EVF so that you can like see people's eyes. Because one of the issues, and this is across the board with all the cameras, some camera brands are worse than others, like Lumix is terrible, Leica, terrible for this, Fuji, terrible for this, is like the eye autofocus. Canon is nice because it has a nice thin white box around the eye, and you have two triangles, so it doesn't interfere with the image too much, but it still interferes with the image. Some brands have like <laughs> box around the whole image and then crosshairs around the eye and then green dots bouncing around all over the place. See, as, as a portrait photographer, or someone who wants to shoot people, the important thing is to capture emotion. You wanna capture the, the, the essence of the emotion. You're shooting a wedding, you wanna catch that moment where the emotion is in the bride's eye. Or if you're doing portraits, you wanna capture the emotion in the eye. And I find with these, these cameras and these boxes around the eyes, it's just so distracting and frustrating. It kind of takes you out of that moment and it prevents you from being able to see that emotion. And I think Canon did a, did a good job compared to other brands because that box around the eyes is really thin. It's a thin white box and it just, it doesn't distract too much. So I do appreciate that with Canon. So uh, that's definitely a thumbs up. So for uh, screens, I give it nine out of 10. Obviously, if there was better magnification in the EVF, I'd give it 10 out of 10, but it's like 9.5 out of 10. Like it's really good, no complaints about the screens on the R5 at all. All right, let's talk about the menu. This one's gonna be quick. It's, it's a Canon menu, it is amazing. Everything is laid out nice and simple. It's color coordinated. You can find everything in logical order. Usually a lot of the times, the things that are more prevalent are at the front of the menu instead of the back. You also have a My Menu feature so you can actually create your own menu settings. So if you, and you can create multiple My Menu settings. So you can have My Menu for studio shoots. You can have a My Menu for outdoor shoots, a My Menu for video shoots, a My Menu for, um, I know, slow-mo video, that kind of thing, which is, which is awesome. So when it comes to the Canon menu, it's really nice. Plus with the R5, and this isn't found in any other camera except for the R3 at the moment, is you can save your settings, all your custom settings that you spend hours calibrating and setting up on your camera, you can save them to a memory card. And that is awesome. Video about it there if you wanna check it out. Tons of R5 content on the channel. Check out whatever you like. But you can actually save your content or save your settings to a memory card. And there's two benefits to this. One is, let's say you have multiple R5s. You can just plug the card into all the R5s and you can just have the same settings everywhere. Just offload it from the card onto the camera, boom, done. I guess another thing too is like, if something happens to your R5 and you have to get a loaner, you pop in your memory card, transfer your settings. Another benefit too is like, if you have different settings for shooting weddings and different settings for shooting portraits, different settings for video, whatever the case may be, all your, your custom settings, you can save multiple settings to one card. I wouldn't put it on one of these expensive cards because if you format the card, it's gone. Go on eBay, find like an old two gig SD card or some you know something like that and just save all your settings onto that card and there you go. No matter what, anytime you, I, I wonder actually, I don't know, probably not, but I wonder if the settings from the R5 are backwards or forwards compatible with the R5 Mark II so you can take your settings and Anyway, so needless to say, the menu on the R5, absolutely fantastic, no complaints. All right, been sitting too long, I need to stretch the legs and stand up. I'm not used to like sitting and talking so much anymore. But um, yeah, so let's talk about field use. How is the R5 as a camera in the field, as a camera that I, it's been my go-to camera, my main camera for the last four years, what do I think about it? Is it, is it flawed? Is it hard to use? Is it too quirky? You know, is it, is it a pain in the butt to use? And no, not at all. In fact, the R5, for me personally, my personal user experience is the best camera that Canon has ever made. Menus are easy to navigate. In fact, it's so intuitive. You just like, if you're working with a client and you need to change a setting, it just literally you pop in, click, 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 done and go. Or you can save your settings. You have your custom functions, one, two, three in photo mode. And then you have another one, two, three custom functions in video mode. So you've got six custom functions in total. And you know what, as a professional shooter, like I just keep everything in manual mode all the time. I'm not really in FV or aperture priority or shutter priority or any of that kind of stuff. Everything is just always manual. Gives me the most control and the dial, nice and easy to spin. And you have three wheels, which is absolutely awesome. So one wheel is your shutter speed, one is your aperture, one is your ISO. So as you're shooting, you're just, it's muscle memory, right? Your fingers just go and change the settings and, and you're done. So. 
As a camera for shooting clients, no problem with photography, no problem with videography. Obviously, like you can run into overheating issues if you're shooting 8K, but I mean, that's just overkill anyway. 4K HQ, 4K All Eye, absolutely amazing. This is 4K IPB that you're looking at right now. Looks great. Plus, I have a black Pro Mist filter one quarter strength on here as well. So we're shooting at the lowest possible uh, Kodak and we have a, a filter to kind of cut down the sharpness and we're filming with a 15 to 35 millimeter Nisi True Color VND filter and a Nisi Polarizer filter stacked on there. So that's what you're looking at. There's three filters on top of the 15 to 35 shooting in 4K IPB. Still looks good. So here's a question I'm gonna get in the comments. So I'm gonna answer it right now. Is will I upgrade to the R5 Mark II when it comes out or will I stick with the R5? Now, it's a complicated answer for me because I run a YouTube channel along with my photography videography business. So if we take the YouTube channel out of the equation and it's just my photo video business, I would not buy the R5 Mark II. In fact, what I would do is double down on the R5 and buy another R5 body, and maybe even two R5 bodies, depending on the price. That way you have backups. And when you're shooting video, you can shoot from multiple angles with the same camera and you get the same color signs because there is a difference like the R looks different from the R5, which looks different from the R6, which looks different from the R7. They all have slightly different color sciences. I don't think Canon has nailed down the color science with their mirrorless technology yet. So they're still working on it. So there is a little variance. So I, I would get multiple R5s. Now, bring YouTube back into the equation and I kind of have no choice. I have to buy an R5 Mark II because everybody wants to see videos about it and I'm working hard to grow this channel and build up the subscribers and I got to make my unboxing video and my tips and tricks and then how to set up your menu and all that stuff. So I got to provide that info for people who want that, that info and there's going to be a lot of you because I have a feeling the R5 Mark II is going to be a super popular camera. But I say that with a big butt big butts and I cannot lie. because I don't know what they're going to put in the Mark II version of this camera that's going to make it so much better. Even if they put a stack center, sensor in the R5 II, or if they put, I don't know, some crazy new autofocus, or maybe it's going to be a 61 megapixel sensor, like all those things don't really matter because in the end, it's not going to make a difference on the deliverables. When you deliver stuff to your client, they're not gonna know that you shot with 45 or 24 or 61, and they're not gonna be able to tell. I mean, certain situations maybe in high, high contrast situations, they might be able to tell if you're shooting with a DGO sensor or stack sensor or regular sensor. But I mean, with editing technology these days and you have to adjust your lighting and, and make your shot anyway. So to spend, I don't know how much the R5 II is gonna cost, $4,000 or whatever, to spend all that money on trivial upgrades, I don't know if it's worth upgrading. Like the R5 is just such a killer camera. So yeah. All right, outro time. Let's zoom all the way out. Get a nice wide shot here. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any questions about the R5, leave them down in the comments down below. I also have a wealth of videos about the R5 here on YouTube and you can also find it on my blog where I have everything listed. So if you like to go through blogs and watch content, there you go, check it out. And uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel for more R5 and eventually R5 Mark II content. And with that being said, this video is over. Thank you for watching. Peace out. I will see you guys in the next video.